Today on Handy Dad TV, we are going to replace a piece of hardwood flooring. This is engineered hardwood flooring, three eighths of an inch thick. And of course, the situation here is that I originally brought up a wire for the island here, but we decided to move it there. And so this piece of wood needs to be replaced. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm actually working in my daughter's house, which is a foreclosure that she and her fiance bought a few months back. Welcome home. <laughs> We've been renovating it to make it livable. And I've been documenting the whole thing in a series called The Living Flip on my channel. You can find a link to that playlist in the video description if you want to check it out. Now this floor repair situation was definitely a rookie mistake. We ran the wire for a convenience outlet in the island when the room was empty. Well, after we got the refrigerator in place, we realized the island was too close to comfortably open the freezer, so we needed to move the island about a foot, and the wire was coming up in the middle of the floor. Now, moving the wire was easy, but repairing the floor was a bit harder. Let's get into it. Now, this is a random length floor that we have here. This is uh, Mannington Bengal Bay, it's called, and the color is sand. But the situation, thankfully, even though they are random lengths, I did find one that was exactly the right size. So it should be pretty easy. Now to do this, it helps to understand how this flooring works. It is a tongue and groove product. So you can see here's the tongue and here's the groove. And I should say that my flooring is stapled down. It is not glued. So it's going to be much easier, I think, to take it up. The staples run into the tongue. So on this board, it's in this orientation, the staples are on this edge. So that's the edge that's gonna be kind of tough to take out. But the other end is slips into, you can see the tongue there on the previous board. First, I'm gonna take the piece out and see what kind of damage I do. And that'll help me decide how I wanna modify this one to, uh, to fit in this place. Now, obviously, I can't staple the new one down. I'm, I'm gonna use construction adhesive just to hold that in place. It's gonna be the only glued board in this entire floor. But if I do it right, you should never be able to tell. Now to do this, I'm gonna use basically two tools, a circular saw to make straight cuts and then chisels to take them out. And one of the things that I did was I put a border of blue painter's tape around. And the theory goes that if I don't touch that border, then I haven't made any kind of damage to the, the wood around it. It's like playing operation. You don't want to hit the sides. The other thing I've done is I used my uh, a scrap piece of wood to just lower, or I should say raise the blade so that it just goes through the board slightly to the, uh, the layer underneath, but not through it. Now this part obviously takes guts. <laughs> to take a saw and just start cutting into a nice, clean hardwood floor. And it does make a mess, but the objective here is to create a piece in the middle that I can take out the bulk of it. And then that way, you'll see, I'll be able to use the chisels to get the rest of it out. Now this floor has three different widths, three inch, four inch, and five inch, and the piece that I'm working on happens to be a five inch. So I started by making two long cuts uh, they are probably about three inches apart and then I did the two cuts on the ends and uh, I left a border around it of maybe about three quarters of an inch for me to play with and for me to to pull out with the the chisel now this is a bad idea I didn't cut through all the way so I used a screwdriver to pry it up wait for it Ooh. Smack in the face. Ooh. I'm bleeding. Oh, oh well. I ruined my mustache. It didn't look like much, but it really hurt. And I had a fat lip for the rest of the day. The other side came out pretty easy but this side is attached with the staples.
there we go. Tire piece is out. And there are three staples. You can see them right here. That's what was holding the tongue. Luckily, there were only three, and it pulled away pretty easily. Multiple cuts and some chisels enabled me to get this old piece out. And now I'm going to put this piece in its place. When I'm done, you won't be able to tell. Now, other than getting whacked in the face, it came out easier than I expected it to. Now, the next part is to take this and make it fit in that spot. And to do that, I need to doctor it up a little bit. I'm going to use the tongue, the existing tongue there, in this groove here. But I can't fit this one in because it's gonna, it's gonna pivot down. It's gonna go in there and pivot down. So I need to remove the bottom of this groove and I need to remove this tongue and the tongue on the other side. And I'm gonna do that with my table saw. For the first cut to remove the long tongue, I put the blade just underneath the surface and ripped it this way against the fence to take off just the right amount. So now you can see there's no tongue right here. And I did the same thing to take off this tongue, but I used the T-square. Finally, I had to remove the bottom part of this groove right here. I did it the same way with the T-square, just taking off the bottom there. That groove will go into the, uh, the tongue of the previous piece and it'll drop down into place and it should be loose enough for me to get it out so I can test fit it. Here you can see the original on the bottom and that's the way I removed the tongue on top. And this side you can see the original on the bottom and again, remove the bottom of that groove on top. Now, if you don't have a table saw, what you could do is use a utility knife, a very sharp blade on a utility knife and just keep cutting along that line until you actually get through those layers and the tongue just falls off. It takes a lot of time, but it is possible to do. All right, it fits. Just a little bit of a lip, but I'm sure once I pound it into that, that groove there, it should fit fine. And I just put a little piece of tape to let me get it out so I can put it in with some glue now. Obviously, I remove the rosin paper that gets installed underneath a stapled floor, and so I exposed the subfloor here. Well, no, this isn't the subfloor. This is actually the underlayment. So I'm using construction adhesive right on the underlayment, so it will be attached without any kind of fasteners. No nails, no, no staples, nothing. Now, if you're dealing with a glued floor, it's obviously gonna take you more effort to get the piece out. Same process, you'd cut up as many pieces as you can and then you'd chisel them away. And then you'd eventually scrape off the excess, any glue that might have been stuck to the, to the underlayment. And you'd use the same glue that you put the floor down with originally. You could just put it down with a little bit of a putty knife and spread it out. I couldn't do that, obviously. So I'm using actually a putty knife to spread this out nice and thin but in reality I put it on both pieces uh, the floor as well as the the piece itself and um, I think it was actually a little bit thick I, I probably could have gone with less but put it closer to the edges that's just a lesson learned and you'll see when I start tapping in a minute here how when I tap on one edge the other edge goes up Thing to note is that construction adhesive does not bond instantly so you really should weight it down overnight on all the edges and just make sure it adheres really good and now the big reveal peel back the tape and it is beautiful 
that's going to be the best held piece in the whole kitchen and you'd never know. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. Flip. That has inch and a quarter. It's the little one. That's the little one.